Hi, my name is Victoria Steinczyk and I'm a PhD student in the Department of Applied Spectroscopy in the Institute of Nuclear Physics Polish Academy of Sciences in Krakow, Poland. And today I'd like to say something about the preparation of the sample for an XFL campaign. Let's begin. Probably before going to the XFL facility, you will ask yourself the question, how I can check if the sample is ready for XFL measurements? And the first thing that you probably will do will be a preparation of the sample. And what I mean by this is to perform a synthesis of the compound of your interest or buying it in the store, of course, if possible, and then making a sample that you would like to examine. In this case, I'd like to show you how to perform the examination of prospective chemotherapeutics. We believe that copper chemotherapeutics could replace commonly used drugs based on platinum in that way that they could reduce the amount of side effects or the cost of the production. It was observed that a complex of copper and phenantroline, like this I presented you on the right side of the slide, can fit between DNA strands and empower its bindings. Additionally, it was noticed that copper induces the production of free radicals while undergoing some redox reactions, so in which copper changes its oxidation number. And this kind of free radicals can damage the structure of the DNA and lead to death of the cancer cell, what would be, of course, the promising result of the treatment with they use. However, in x facility, what we would like to test is whether the laser excitation of this kind of drugs could enhance the mechanism of the action, so we would like to observe any occurring photodynamic process. Somebody could ask me a question why even a proper sample preparation is that important before performing an experiment with the use of x -Fels. And the first reason of that is sometimes the stability of your sample is not as good as you wanted it to be. I presented you on these two pictures the same sample. On the left side, I showed you the solution that was a copper phenantrine complex dissolved in water, which I examined with the use of the X-ray absorption spectroscopy method. And after measurements, I left this solution for storage for a few days. And after this amount of time, I observed that this solution changed its color from blue to green, what provided me the information that something probably happened with the compound. I've tried to somehow change the situation, I increase the concentration of this compound in water to check what is what will happen. And when I observed that the sample changed dramatically, so in like, like you can see in here, I obtained a blue solution and a part of compound that probably sedimented. So these two results provided me the information that it would be worth before an experiment to prepare a fresh solution of the sample and also to establish the best concentration that will provide the sample that won't be having any not dissolved part. Because what I've said was connected uh, with uh, some activities that you do in chemistry laboratory, now I would like to go there and show you how to perform a synthesis of your chemotherapeutic drug and how to obtain this kind of liquid samples. So let's meet there. Hi, I'm Victoria. Welcome in our chemistry laboratory in the Institute of Nuclear Physics, Polish Academy of Sciences in Krakow, Poland. Even this pandemic situation. Because I'm here alone, I think I can take my mask off. In this part of workshops, I'd like to show you how to perform your own synthesis of the prospective chemotherapeutic drug. So let's begin the synthesis. As you probably guessed by yourself, the first step of each synthesis is proper weighting of all of the compounds. I have got in here three compounds. First, copper chloride, second, triazole, and the third, phenantroline. You have to weigh each of the compounds carefully to not to affect the final product. After weighing, we will put all, all of the compounds into flasks. To ease this, that process, I will use some wafing papers. After putting all of the compounds into the flask, I will add some methanol to dissolve them. Let's start the wafing. I will start with waving the first compound, that is copper chloride. Please remember to tear your scale before the wafing. It should be easy to wave this compound because 
it is in the form of the powder, so it should take not that long. Now I'll transfer this compound into our flask. I have to do it very carefully, not to lose the sample. Nice. So I cannot add the methanol into this flask because it's too toxic. I'll protect our sample with the paraffin, wait another compound, and then we will move to adding some methanol. Like I said before, now I'm going to add the methanol to each of the flasks to dissolve all of the compounds. Then I'll put this one flask into the water bath. Why I'm using water bath? Because I want to be sure that reaction is undergoing in the same temperature. And in this case, it is the temperature of 25 degrees of Celsius. Also, I'm using the magnetic stirrer to just mix all the solutions that are in here. Okay, so I think that I can add some methanol. Now I'm going to add simultaneously these two solutions. I could do it manually, but to ease this process, I'll use these two glass elements. We have to leave now our solution for about two hours. After two hours of mixing, I'm going to erase all of these non-dissolved parts. So I'm going to perform a filtration. The last part is waiting. We have to wait for the metal to evaporate and for the product to crystallize. After one night, I came back to the chemistry laboratory to check the sample. As you can see, all the methanol evaporated. I take off from the glass all of this sample and I weighted it. From the presented used amounts of substrates, I obtained 56.5 mg of the product. If I wanted to prepare for XFAL examination, for example, 20 ml of 25 millimolar solution, I will need 200 milligrams of this product. Therefore, I will need to repeat the whole synthesis four times. Of course, if each synthesis provided me this amount. Because we have got our product, we can move to the preparation of the sample for the laboratory examination. In Excel facility, most of the samples are liquids because the source of radiation is that intensive that it creates a serious radiation damages in materials. 
To obtain such a sample, you will need to dissolve your compound in a solvent, like I did it in here in water. To examine such a sample, you will need a special liquid jet delivery system, and my colleague Rafa will show you in details how such a setup works, because he's developing such a setup in our laboratory. Hello, my name is Rafał Fancelov, and I have started the first year of my PhD studies here at the Institute of Nuclear Physics, Polish Academy of Sciences. Today, I would like to show you our liquid sample delivery system that our team is using during X-ray spectroscopy measurements. But first, because I'm alone in this laboratory, I can safely remove the mask so you can hear me better. Back to the subject. In general, probing uh, materials in solution is a very attractive approach as it provides sample characterization in its native conditions without any time-consuming preparation processes. However, because solvents strongly attenuate the incoming photon flux, the liquid stream needs to be thin enough so X-rays could penetrate the whole volume of the sample. To do that, we use special nozzles, which forms those thin liquid jets. So sit comfortably and enjoy the show. Before we start, you should know that sample delivery systems utilizing liquid jets are commonly applied at large-scale facilities like X-ray free electron lasers. Many diverse approaches with advanced equipment are available there and the setup that in a second I will uh, present to you is a much simpler version of ones you can encounter at XFEL but still being suitable to test jet delivery with laboratory experiments. To assemble the sample delivery system we will need a jet forming nozzle. Let me show it to you up close because it is a very tiny element. A funnel, two laboratory tubes, in this case made of silicon, and a micro gear flow pump. The jet will be installed on this stand and to test our system I will use zinc oxide nanoparticle suspension in distilled water. So let's assemble all the parts. So first thing I'm going to do is to connect pipe to a head pump through so-called swage lock system. Let's make sure that the pipe is sitting tight. Good. So now I will connect one end of uh, the pipe to a funnel and the other to the nozzle. Here it's just a simple connection. When connecting the nozzle to a pipe, I need to be very careful because if I push too hard, the nozzle might break. We are almost ready to turn on the pump. We just need our sample. Let's give it a stir or two. And now I will fill the funnel with nanoparticle suspension. During measurements, the X-ray beam is focused on the flat part of the jet 
right below the nozzle. In that spot, the thickness of the liquid sheet is defined by the gap between the walls of the nozzle. So now let's see the other type of the nozzle that we use in our lab. This is a 3D printed element made of polylactite with a squared cross section and jack thickness of 3 mm. The great advantage this printing approach provides is the possibility of making the nozzles at basically any time we want with different dimensions and different shapes relatively to their intended use. It's also way cheaper to print a single polylactite nozzle than to buy a quartz cuvette. However, the trade-off is that they are not as resistant as previously shown model, so some strong organic solvents like toluene or hexane might damage the nozzle during longer measurements. Generally, the choice of the right nozzle depends on the sample. Smaller amounts of specimen require longer path lengths for scanning photons, which means thicker liquid jets, but that also corresponds to stronger signal damping by the solvent. So a properly selected nozzle allows obtaining a sufficiently large signal from the sample while minimizing negative effect of the fluid. The advantage of the system is its simple operation and the ability to probe liquid samples without any prior processing. The entire setup takes up a relatively small area and its individual components like jet nozzle, laboratory tubes and head pump are easy to assemble and easy to replace, which allows us to transport the system and use it in other places, especially in facilities with more advanced X-ray sources like synchrotrons and X-ray free electron lasers. So this is how we prepare liquid samples for laboratory experiments. Thank you for your kind attention.